All right, so I have some good news and you are not gonna believe it. I actually got my table back at Reptilian Nation, the reptile show that's just a couple days away and it's cutting it close right at the last minute. I just can't even believe it. And if you've been watching kind of the whole drama on my YouTube channel kind of unraveling, I've been looking forward to going to that show for a couple months and then when I went to buy the table, they sent me an email that said uh, they, they booked all the tables and they had like 10 people waiting in line. So I thought, you know, there's no way that I'm gonna get a table and then here a week later I get another email that says hey we're gonna send you an invoice we have a table for you and you can sell your snakes at the reptile show which is pretty awesome and you guys know I'll have all ball pythons there I'll probably have probably close maybe to 40 snakes at the show I'll have a lot of stuff from last year and this guy's like putting the death grip on me come on buddy <laughs> all right all right uh, it's not a choke competition <laughs> sometimes these snakes get a little crazy but uh <laughs> all right let's, he's like got the death grip on my neck today i don't know what's going on with this guy but uh i'll have you know at the show i'll have mostly uh, mostly the stuff I'd say from last year, maybe 50-50, maybe 20 snakes from last year, which are pretty big snakes. They'll be in bigger display cases. And then I was thinking of bringing some of the stuff that I have from this year. It's kind of tricky because the hatchlings that I have now really haven't eaten anything and they really, some of them haven't even shed. They're fresh out of the eggs. So, and typically people don't sell them until they've had at least three meals in order to sell them. So probably what I'll do is I'll bring them to the show and, and I'll just kind of, you know, tell people these are for advanced keepers only because essentially what they really need is they need live mouse hoppers or mouse fuzzies kind of in that size range between a fuzzy and a hopper and it really needs to be live mice for the first few meals otherwise it is almost impossible to get some of these snakes to eat and, I, and some people come up to my table and they say hey I bought a snake from a guy and it actually died and I'm thinking it's probably in a situation like this where you know you buy a hatchling ball python you have to feed it get it feeding within the first you know three or four months or you know you could actually lose that snake so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring them mainly to show them off kind of show you what I have and you can kind of see them if you're an advanced keeper if you have ball pythons maybe you're breeding some mice and you have a supply of live mice or if you know of a pet store that has live mice and also if you know how to assist feed which is essential in some cases to get these ball pythons going it may be a good option to get you know a, a really young snake early on and usually the small snakes are a little bit cheaper because you don't have as much food into them as the snake gets bigger and bigger typically it gets more expensive because breeders like me we put more food and money and bedding and stuff into the snake so we have to recoup some of that cost Plus, if it's a bigger snake, there's more of a demand as far as the market. Everybody wants snakes that are pretty much ready to breed, you know, ready to go, and you can make a return on investment pretty quick. So uh, uh, I think what I'm going to do today is the, on one of my last videos, I opened up a box of ball python eggs and I was going through the hatchlings and I had some that were, <laughs> this guy's getting ready to choke me out again, I had some that I thought were coral glow lemon blasts and I, I had a bunch of comments under that video and a lot of people said hey I have some coral glow lemon blasts and none of them look like your snake they look completely different and uh, <laughs> all right what's this guy doing oh anyway so so I was kind of looking at those snakes again you know and I was looking back at the video and I thought you know what maybe those are just lemon blasts maybe there's no coral glow in them and then it's been about a week week and a half and I pulled them out and let me tell you they look different than a regular lemon blast they have definitely have some orange in the belly really bright orange that looks like almost a coral glow orange in the belly but they don't really look like uh, the coral glow lemon blasts that I see on Morph Market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the parents and then I want to show you uh, a lemon blast, the kind of the smaller one that I have so you can kind of see what a lemon blast is supposed to look like. And then I want to show you those hatchlings and you can actually see and you can make the decision if there's actually something going on with maybe some coral glow or you know I started thinking maybe there's some kind of chimerism going on where it's like uh, it's kind of a genetic anomaly where it's kind of mixed in 
uh, non-reproducible coral glow lemon blast mix. Uh, it's the kind of thing in that, but then if you have two snakes that are chimeras in the same clutch, I think that would be highly, highly unlikely. So let's check out those snakes and I wanna see what you think. All right, so here is the parent. This is what an adult coral glow looks like. It's pretty much the same as a banana ball python. They essentially are two different lines of exactly the same snake. This one happens to be 100% het pied, so it's got one copy of the pied gene. Of course, if you breed it to something else that's het pied or a visual pied, you can actually get some visual pieds uh, in the offspring. And the other interesting thing is, is the male and the females are linked to the coral glow gene. So this one happens to be a male maker. Last year I produced a whole bunch of coral glows and every single coral glow was a male, which is pretty interesting. So that's that's kind of the background on this gem right here. And when they're small, I'd say they're, they're a lot oranger and the orange pretty much turns to yellow as they mature. And they don't really have these spots. If you look at like kind of the freckles that they have on here, this is part of the morph that uh, they develop with age and some of them get really speckly all over and some of them like this one, I think I think the head pied kind of has an influence on this one. Doesn't really get a lot of the spots like I've seen on some of them. But but if you notice like a brand new hatchling coral glow, doesn't have many spots at all. As a matter of fact, when I got this, I was looking for a young coral glow that didn't have uh, had the least amount of spots. And I picked this up, and then it essentially had no spots when when I bought it as a baby. And then it was like six months later and all the spots developed. And then I found out that there is an incredible transformation in color and the spots, the freckles on these snakes as they mature. All right, so here is the female from that clutch. The, the, the coral glow is the father. This one is the mom. And <laughs> look at how beautiful this snake is. She's really big. She laid a big clutch of eggs and she really hasn't come on food ever since she laid those eggs. And the interesting thing about this is if you notice in the belly the belly doesn't really have any orange in it at all so it's got really a white belly there's really no orange and you'll see in those babies there's quite a bit of orange in those babies <laughs> and the interesting thing about this is there's you know different lines of pastel which can really affect the color of the, the final lemon blast. Some lemon blasts are really bright, some lemon blasts are a little bit faded out, but I haven't really seen any that have a lot of orange in the belly. They're pretty, pretty white in there. So this is a pastel and a pinstripe, two genes in one snake. It's a pretty awesome snake. All right, so I wanna show you some of these hatchlings. Here is a lemon bl blast from last year. It's a little bit brighter. They start out really bright. This one actually has the scaleless head gene in it, but they, they start out a little bit brighter and then they kind of fade, but this one doesn't have any orange in the belly at all. Now compare that one to this. Take a look at this. This is one of the coral glows that came out of that clutch. And look at how kind of orange, I don't know if you can quite capture that on the camera, but it's, it's kind of really got an orange color to it compared to this Lemon Blasts. And these are definitely coral glows. The, the, the Lemon Blasts that came along with this hatchling, I think there's something going on where they might have a little coral glow in the genetics. And let me show you that. All right, so take a look at this. I'm gonna compare this hatchling where I think it has some coral glow or something going on with this other one, and if you see them side by side, this is the one I thought had some coral glow in it, and look at how orange it is compared to a regular lemon blast. It definitely has a really orange belly, and it's really obvious. I don't know what's going on with this snake. <laughs> and some people are saying, you know, there's definitely no coral glow in there. I've had probably five or six people say, there's definitely no coral glow in there, because coral glow, typically what it does is it fades out all the black, kind of like an albino kind of a morph, where it fades it all out. But there's definitely something going on. I'm not quite sure what's going on with this snake, but it definitely, has a lot of orange compared to a regular lemon blast. If you take a look at the bellies, look at the differences. See if I can if I can get this on film here. The belly of a lemon blast versus the belly of this one. I don't know if we can see it very good, but you can kind of see on the side there's definitely 
some orange in that snake. I don't know where that orange is coming from. And usually with a chimerism, if you have a chimera, sometimes you'll see that the eyes are different colors or you'll see like, uh, like a stripe down the middle of the back where one half of the snake is different than the other. And a chimerism is basically, if you get a chimera, it's essentially two eggs that fuse into a single animal, has two sets of different GNA in one animal, which is kind of interesting. I've never actually produced a chimera, and I'm not sure that this one actually is a chimera, but it's just kind of an interesting anomaly. All right, so here's another one. It's pretty much a different snake from the same clutch. Looks almost exactly the same. Everyone is saying this is a lemon blast too, but if you look at this lemon blast and compare it to a regular lemon blast, look at the difference in the color of that lemon blast. There is definitely something going on in there and to me it almost, it almost you know it's coming from a coral glow clutch so I'm thinking there might be coral glow in here it might be different than everybody else's lemon blast coral glows I don't know exactly what's going on with these snakes all right so here's another interesting comparison here is a coral glow of course this one's kind of in shed so it's kind of faded out a little bit but if you compare this coral glow this is one of the hatchlings with this lemon blast coral glow it almost looks like the lemon blast is even a little more orange than the coral glow, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if you can see that. I think it's a better comparison with the lemon blast, what I think is a lemon blast coral glow next to that regular lemon blast. You can really see the difference between the two, but I think there's something going on, which is really interesting. Sometimes you hatch out some of these snakes and you really don't know what's going on. And you, you hatch something out and you're kind of scratching your head. What in the world is this? And that is kind of what I'm thinking with these lemon blasts. All right, so there you have it. I am really looking forward to setting up shop at the show. I'll have one eight foot table full of probably about 40 snakes. It should be a really good time and I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys at the show. Hopefully you can buy those tickets that you cashed in, do the VIP, get there early, and buy the snake that you wanted from my display cases. I know I've been kind of going through my snakes, showing you which ones I have for sale. I'm sure you guys probably have your eye on one or more of my snakes. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.